Hey guys, come on downstairs. It's our Cal State Fullerton Titans Dynasty. We are in Season 1. We're going to finish things up here with Week 15 and the Conference Championship Week. So let's start out with a score from the top 25 here in Week 15. Texas at number 24 beat Baylor 31-24 to, to finish the season 8-4. and four. And now let's head out to Philadelphia for Army-Navy in Season number 1. In the snow in Philadelphia, Army-Navy? Hell yeah. Here comes Army with the ball first early in the first quarter. And that does not bode well for Navy. Kelvin Hopkins Jr., 48 yards. Quarterback keeps it and goes for six. It's seven to nothing. Army. Hopkins slips, then fires a strike on the right side. Catch is made by Kel Walker. 26 yard reception. This drive would end in a Black Knight field goal. Army jumps out to a 10 to nothing lead. Army's probably going to be heading to a bowl game. Navy is not. This is the end of their season. And they cannot convert on that fourth down. Later on in the second quarter, with the score 13 to nothing, O.J. Davis, 16-yard reception, puts Navy down inside the 10. And then Malcolm Perry, five-yard touchdown run. Navy is on the board now. It's 13 to seven early in the second half. Malcolm Perry from the pocket, thrown out to the left side. The catch is made by Michael Cooper. And this drive for the midshipman would end in a field goal, making it 13 to 10. All right, late in the third quarter, Army has it deep in Navy territory. Sandon McCoy, four-yard touchdown run. Army goes up by a score of 20 to 10. Next possession for Navy, though. Perry will keep it. And he has some open fill down the right side. One guy to beat, and he cannot run him down. Navy cuts the lead to three. It's 20 to 17 now, still late in the third quarter. What started out as a low-scoring game has turned. Navy now holds a 24-20 lead. Christian Hayes, late in the fourth quarter, makes the catch. And here come the Black Knights. Kelvin Hopkins, four-yard carry, third down and goal. Hopkins pitches. Touchdown, Anthony Adkins. And Army takes the lead. One minute left in the game. Here comes Navy on a third down and seven. They give Nelson Smith forward progress. He gets the first down. 45 seconds. Army leading by three. Malcolm Perry's going to pull it down and run. He has the first down on a 16-yard carry. In the red zone now, Malcolm Perry under pressure is going to pull it down and run. He's got some open field in front of him, and he's down to what appears to be the five-yard line. First down and goal, 26 seconds. Navy Perry pulls it down. He scores. Six-yard carry. The midshipmen take the lead, 31 to 27. Final play of the game here, with one second left. Hopkins throws it up towards the end zone. It is batted around, incomplete. And Navy will end their season with a win over bitter rival Army. Army will go on to play in a bowl game, but Navy gets bragging rights for a year. Army finishes at six and six. Navy, 4-8, and 2-7. and seven. Incidentally, Army will spend next season in Conference USA, but more to come on that later. Florida Atlantic, 21, UTEP, 7. South Alabama, 41. Louisiana, 28. Both teams bowl eligible in the Sun Belt. North Texas, 38-17 over Marshall. The Mean Green become bowl eligible at 6-6. Six and six. They're 5-3 and three in the Sun Belt, or in Conference USA, sorry. And uh, Louisiana Tech, 41 to 34 over Middle Tennessee. Both of those teams are bowl eligible as well. And another Conference USA game, FIU, 35 to 14 over Rice. Rice finishes off the season winless at 0 and 12. All right, the de facto Big 12 championship game. It's not officially a championship game. It was a scheduled game, but the winner will take home the Big 12 title. Oklahoma State hosting Oklahoma in the Bedlam series. Oklahoma with the ball first. Jalen Hurts completes a pass to the right side. Some broken tackles. And Nick Baskin goes 57 yards down the right side. Oklahoma looking to strike first on a third down and one. Jalen Hurts pulls it down, runs it in. Touchdown Sooners. Seven to nothing. Later in the first quarter, Jalen Hurts would whip one over the middle two, C.D. Lamb, down inside the 15. First down and goal, another one. This time to Charleston Rambo, nine-yard touchdown. And Oklahoma jumps out to an early lead. We're only halfway through the first quarter. It's 14 to nothing Sooners. 
Here come the Cowboys. This is Drew Brown. He's going to pull it down and run. And he is going to cough up the football. He fumbles it. It's picked up by the Sooners. They're going the other way. Out across the 35 to the 37. Not the way Oklahoma State wanted to start this game. That turnover would turn into three points for the Sooners. Making a 17 to nothing late in the first quarter. Let's go to the second now. This is Jalen Hurts. Right side, wide open Charleston Rambo. And things are going south for Oklahoma State. Jalen Hurts again. No, Spencer Rattler. I don't know why Jalen Hurts was out, but Spencer Rattler runs it in for the touchdown. 31 to 6. Hurts might have been hurt. We shall see. Here is Oklahoma State now. Drew Brown hounds it right up the middle. 31 to 13 is the score. We're midway through the fourth quarter. Spencer Rattler on the screen pass to TJ Pledger. 11 yard touchdown and the Sooners are going to roll. They win the Big 12 title with a win in Stillwater by a score of 38 to 13. Sooners finish at 11 and one, eight and one in the conference. Oklahoma State seven and five, six and three in the Big 12. All right, that's it for week 15. Let's jump straight into championship week starting with the Mid-American Conference. Toledo at seven and five, Miami of Ohio at seven and five. For the MAC title, and I think they play this at Ford Field. Am I correct? I think I'm right. Toledo at Miami of Ohio from Ford Field in Detroit. Red Hawks. Jackson Williamson is sacked in the end zone by Jamal Hines. It's two to nothing Rockets. Here comes Toledo now on a fourth down and 18. Down the right side, a completion is made. Reggie Gilliam in for the 30 yard touchdown on that fourth down from Eli Peters. It is nine to nothing Rockets. Here comes Miami of Ohio. One floated down the left side to Jack Sorensen, 30 yard touchdown, Red Hawks. Cut the lead to two. Nine to seven late in the first quarter. Here's Peters, throws out to the left side, pass is intercepted by the Red Hawks. And if he can stay in bounds, he might take it to the house. He's gonna get a block. And it's a touchdown for the Red Hawks, 14 to nine. Miami with the lead. Later in the second quarter, Miami University has it on a fourth down and goal. Jackson Williamson is stuffed by Justin Clark. Later on, Miami of Ohio would tack on a field goal. 34 seconds left in the first half. Toledo would have the ball. Andrew Davis, 21-yard reception. And that would put them in a situation where they just have to kick a field goal before halftime, making it 17-12. to Here comes Toledo now. Over the middle on a third down, Desmond Phillips makes the catch. On a first down and 10, a read option. Quarterback keeper by Mitchell Gud Gudani. And then the give straight up the gut to Shakif Seymour. Five yard touchdown run, Toledo takes the lead. They're gonna go for two to try to make it a three point game. A diving attempt does not reach. It is 18 to 17. Toledo with the ball still here late in the third quarter. It moves to the fourth quarter, and Toledo would tack on a field goal. 21 to 17, Rockets. Midway through the fourth quarter now, Rockets looking to add to their lead. Make it a two-score game. Back in the end zone, the pass is intercepted by Miami of Ohio. He thinks about coming out, but decides not to. On a fourth down and 10, Red Hawks try to go for it. Maurice Thomas is stopped short. And the Toledo Rockets hold on to win. The MAC Championship, your MAC Champion Toledo Rockets. 21-17 win from Ford Field, Toledo 8-5, Miami of Ohio 7-6. Both teams should be bowling. All right, Mountain West Conference Championship game from San Diego. 25th ranked San Diego State hosting Utah State from what used to be known as Qualcomm Stadium. Who knows what it is now? I don't know. Here is Jordan Love. On a third down and four, early in the second quarter to Jordan Nathan. No score yet in the game. Aggies have it down in the red zone. Jordan Love, right side pass broken up by Darren Hall. It's fourth down. And Dominic Everly would come in to attempt a field goal for Utah State to get the scoring started at three to nothing. Later on in the second quarter, still three nothing. Jordan Love over the middle again to Jordan Nathan. 13 yard reception for Nathan, third down and 10. On the draw up the middle to Jalen Warren. Five yard gain, Dominic Everly would have to come in 
and try to put more points on the board. He does. It's six to nothing Utah State. Their defense holding strong against. I mean, San Diego State has a great defense, but Utah State's defense is matching them. Late in the second quarter, San Diego State would chip into the Utah State lead with a field goal. Let's go to the second half. It's still six to three. Utah State with the lead. Taylor Compton, ten yard reception, brings up another fourth down. And another Dominic Everly field goal attempt. This one from 46 yards out. The kick is up. And it is off the upright. Off the right upright. It almost sneaks in. It might have even glanced the, the uh, crossbar. Still 6-3. to three. Jordan Love throwing it right side. Passes incomplete. Broken up. And here we go with another field goal. Dominic Everly's kick is up. It is no good. He misses a wide left. So Utah State is keeping San Diego State in the game here. Late in the third quarter, Taylor Compton with another catch for 11 yards on a second down and four. Jordan Love over the middle to COC Mariner. First down and goal for the Aggies. They spread everything out. Jordan Love runs it up the middle, dives forward, cannot reach the goal line. Second down and goal as we go to the fourth quarter. Utah State leading 6-3 over 25th ranked San Diego State. All right, second down and goal for the Aggies from the goal line. Here's the give left side to Gerald Bright. One-yard touchdown run. Utah State makes it a two-score game in the fourth. Now, later on in the fourth, San Diego State backed up in their own side of the field. Agnew almost steps out of the back of the end zone. He dumps it off to Jawan Washington. He goes nowhere. San Diego State has to punt. Utah State on the ensuing possession after the punt. Jordan Love is going to keep it. To the five, and he plows his way into the end zone. An 18-yard touchdown for Jordan Love. Utah State out to a 20-3 lead. Later on in the fourth quarter, San Diego State trying to get something going offensively, and Ryan Agnew throws the interception to Kevin Metzenheimer over the middle, and that would essentially end the game for San Diego State. Utah State holds on, and they are the Mountain West Conference champions. They will await their bowl destination. Probably either the Las Vegas Bowl or the Poinsettia Bowl. One of those two is where the Mountain West champion usually ends up. 20-3 Utah State, 10-3, 7-2 in conference. San Diego State finishes at 10-3. They're 8-1 in conference. And whichever bowl Utah State doesn't get, San Diego State will probably go to out of those two. All right, American Athletic Conference, Central Florida and Cincinnati from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Bearcats have the ball first. This is uh, Desmond Ritter, 11-yard touchdown run for Ritter. And the Bearcats jump out to a 7-0 lead in the second quarter. Here comes Brandon Wimbush and the Knights. Wimbush down the right side. Catch is made into the red zone. Goes Kevon Ahmad. Second down and goal now for UCF. Wimbush. Pummel at the five-yard line. He is stopped by Michael Pitts. Third down and goal. Wimbush is going to keep it again. Cincinnati is all over that. Brings up fourth down. UCF, will they bring in the field goal unit? They do. On fourth down, UCF will get points on the board, making it 7-3. to three. Cincinnati. Bearcats now at the UCF two-yard line. The give is to Michael Warren. On the right side for the touchdown. Cincinnati jumps out to a 14-3 lead late in the second quarter. We go to the half, 17-3 in Cincinnati. Let's go to the second half now. Very first play of the second half, UCF has the ball first. They fumble it on the opening play, and it's recovered by the Bearcats. First turnover of the game for either team. Cincinnati has it, and they would turn that into a field goal attempt. The kick is up. It's good. It's 20-3. Bearcats with the lead over UCF. Cincinnati, what's on the line for them? Well, they might make it to a BCS Bowl with a win in this game. Brandon Wimbush, left side, touchdown. Cuts the lead in half. It's 20 to 10. Here comes UCF again, late in the third quarter. Brandon Wimbush, left side. Nice toe tap by Gabriel Davis. Third down and seven now, deep in Cincinnati territory. Wimbush, screen pass. Is going to come up short, Adrian Killens. To the two or to the seven, excuse me, and they have to kick a field goal, making it 20 to 13. Here comes UCF now. Brandon Wimbush down the left side. 
Down to the five yard line goes Gabriel Davis, third down and goal for the Knights now. Brandon Wimbush, read option, goes straight up the middle of the field, four yard touchdown run. And folks, we're tied here in the fourth quarter of the AAC Championship game. Here comes Cincinnati. Ritter hit as he lets it go. But there's a pass interference downfield. What? UCF can't believe it, and that's going to give Cincinnati the opportunity to kick a field goal. With one second left, Brandon Wimbush and UCF have one more chance. They throw it down the right side. It's incomplete. And Cincinnati might be headed to a BCS Bowl. Stay tuned. We will see. Our bowl selection special will be up next after this episode. So Cincinnati wins the American Athletic Conference. We hand out another trophy. Cincinnati 12-1, 9-1 over or in a conference play. UCF 10-3, 7-3 in conference play. All right, let's move on now to the Pac-12. Number 5, Utah at 11-1. Number 8, Oregon from Autzen Stadium. Utah trying to get revenge for the only loss they've suffered this season at the hands of Oregon in this venue. Samson Nakua makes the catch for the Utes. Third down and two. Tyler Huntley whips one into the end zone. Brian Thompson in traffic makes the catch. And the Utes lead it 7-0 at halftime. Very low scoring game. That's kind of what Utah has been all about this year. A lot of low scoring games. Although last time these two teams played earlier in the season, Oregon hung 34 on that defense. Late in the third quarter now, Utah, Damari Simpkins, 27-yard touchdown from Tyler Huntley and a two-score game this late seems almost insurmountable against the Utah defense. Justin Herbert and the Ducks will try though. Brian Addison down to the two-yard line. Herbert is going to pull it down and keep it. He bowls over a defender into the end zone. Touchdown Ducks. It's now 14-7 with 5.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Ducks have the ball back with a chance to tie the game. With 1.43 to go, Justin Herbert throws the interception, and Utah would return it down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. First down and 10 for the Utes. With a minute 36 to go, Tyler Huntley picks up the first down to the 15. Later in the drive on a third down and two, the give is to Zach Moss right up the gut. Seven-yard touchdown for Zach Moss and the Utes. Avenge the earlier loss to the Ducks. If they would have won that game, they might be in the national championship. But as it is, they are likely headed to the Rose Bowl as the Pac-12 champions at 12-1 and 9-1 and and in conference. Oregon falls to 10-3 and three and 8-2 and two in the Pac-12. They should get a very solid bowl game, maybe even a uh, one of the, uh, I don't know, BCS at-large bids. We'll see. All right, Big Ten Championship game from Lucas Oil Stadium, Iowa and Michigan. They both won their way here on the last game of the season. Iowa by beating Nebraska, Michigan by beating Ohio State. On a third down and goal for Michigan, Shea Patterson moving around in the pocket, floats it out to the left side, and Iowa with the interception. Both teams playing great defense early in this game. Here's Shea Patterson again. Midway through the second quarter, connects down the left side for a nice pickup. Inside the red zone goes the Wolverines. Shea Patterson out to the right side. Touchdown, caught by Black at 7 to nothing. Michigan, two minutes left in the first half. Shea Patterson again. Over the middle, catch is made. Another touchdown for Tariq Black. This one from 47 yards, and the Wolverines are out to a two-score lead. We go to the third quarter, late in the third. It's still 14 to nothing, Michigan. Iowa's offense has done nothing. Nate Stanley floats one out to the left side. It is picked off by the Wolverines, and we come the other way with it. Second turnover of the day. This is Ambry Thomas picking off Nate Stanley. End of the third quarter, Wolverines lead at 14 to nothing. Here comes Nate Stanley in Iowa trying to get back in the game midway through the fourth. Torin Young picks up few yards on fourth down and five. Look at the catch in the back of the end zone by Nico Raggiani. Great catch. Makes it 14 to seven. 
Later in the fourth quarter on a huge third and three, Iowa needs a stop. They really could have used a turnover. They get the stop. Michigan will bring in the field goal unit with a minute 47 to go. Iowa holding on to one timeout. The kick is up. It's good. And Iowa can't come back from that. Michigan holds on to win a low-scoring Big Ten championship game. Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines will hoist the Big Ten championship trophy. Something I'm sure they wish they could have done in real life at some point in the Jim Harbaugh tenure. So the fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines with a 17-7 win over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's move on to the SEC title game. Number 10, Texas A&M against number 2, Georgia. A win by the Bulldogs might send him to the national championship game for a rematch against Clemson. Let's see how it goes. Jake Fromm early in the game throws the interception to Texas A&M. And not a great start for the Bulldogs. That would turn into three points for the Aggies. And they get the scoring started. It's three to nothing Texas A&M. Later in the first, Jake Fromm from the pocket throws over the middle. Demetrius Robertson down the seam for the touchdown. It is now seven to three Bulldogs. Later in the first, Jake Fromm again down the same seam. Another touchdown for the Dogs as 14 to three Georgia. We go to early in the second quarter. Another receiver gets loose down the right side. And it's another touchdown. This time it's Tyler Simmons. And all of a sudden, things are going very badly for Texas A&M. Jake Fromm now. Another one gets behind the defense. This one, I think, is Cager. And he is down inside the 10. On a second down and goal to give to DeAndre Swift. Six-yard touchdown run. It's 28-3 Bulldogs. They're running away with it. Here comes Texas A&M. Kellen Mond is going to run it in from seven yards out, making it 28 to 10 to stop the bleeding just a little bit. Just before halftime now, DeAndre Swift down the right side. Touchdown Bulldogs again. And this one is getting ugly. Texas A&M fans might want to turn away. Fromm, middle of the field, caught. Down inside the 10 are the Bulldogs now on a third down and five with 3.18 to go in the third. And another touchdown to Lawrence Cager. It's now 42 to 10. Later in the third quarter, Jake Fromm, play action, throwing deep down the right side, broken coverage. And Texas A&M gives up another long touchdown. This time it's Lawrence Cager for a third time. It's 49 to 10. And the Bulldogs are gonna keep pouring it on. Eli Wolf, 10-yard touchdown reception. And we're going to call it right here. Georgia, the SEC champions, and they are very likely to take on Clemson if Clemson can win their conference championship game. Georgia, 56-24 to over Texas A&M. All right, let's check in on that ACC title game featuring the undefeated Clemson Tigers narrowly escaping South Carolina in their final game of the season. They'll have to play better than that if they want to beat the Virginia Tech Hokies in the ACC title game. Trevor Lawrence early in the game, down the left side, catches made by T. Higgins, 52 yards. And then Travis Etienne, a one-yard touchdown run, puts the Tigers in the lead, 7-0 early. Here is Ryan Willis now for Virginia Tech, trying to match. They might have to do what South Carolina did to match Clemson's offense. Not going to happen if you throw picks, though. Ryan Willis throws the interception. His first pass of the game is picked off. And here comes Clemson. Trevor Lawrence, read option, scores it himself, 14 to nothing. Clemson with the lead. Later on in the first, Trevor Lawrence throws it over the middle. It's intercepted by Virginia Tech, and that might be the momentum change that the Hokies need. We go to the half, though, with Clemson up 20 to nothing. Let's get to the second half now. Virginia Tech with the ball deep in Clemson territory. Jalen Holston runs it in from a few yards out for a 20 to 7. Clemson lead. Here come the Tigers now, 542. Trevor Lawrence fakes the pitch, and he runs it in himself. 10-yard touchdown. Clemson leading now 28 to 7, 27 to 7. I should say, here's the pitch left side to Travis Etienne, three yard touchdown run, and this one's starting to look like a blowout as well. Clemson and Georgia might just be 
It might just be destiny for those two teams to meet in the national championship game after meeting in the first week of the season. Virginia Tech with the ball. Jalen Holston down to the one. Third down and goal. Ryan Willis is going to keep it. He pitches it left side, and it's a touchdown for the Hokies. They're going to make the score look a little bit more respectable here. 34-14. Trevor Lawrence and Clemson. A bomb down the left side. It's caught by T. Higgins. He goes down. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Over the middle. Catch is made. And then a fumble into the end zone where it's recovered by a Clemson player. Touchdown, Tigers. And when you're good, you're lucky. And when you're lucky, you're good. Clemson wins the ACC title. No surprise there. It's just unfortunate for all of college football that South Carolina couldn't stop them on that fourth down. But for Clemson Tigers fans, you guys are going to the national championship once again, probably to face Georgia with a 44-14 win over Virginia Tech. And that's going to end week 15 in the conference championships. Up next, we will announce the bowl games, the bowl destinations, and the BCS Bulls and the national championship here on Mama's Basement Sports Games.